Even in death. This man in the forest alone is Lee Forrester's dad, and he has cancer, and he brought a gun with him because he's spiraling in his hopelessness about his cancer diagnosis. And the man thing is in the forest too, and he's an empath, and he can sense this man's pain, and it's causing him physical pain. So man thing's instinct is to get rid of the thing causing his physical pain. But he also sees that there is this other entity swirling around the man, making his distress even worse. Jack Forrester shoots himself, and the demon despair appears, and it was him feeding off Jack Forrester's pain and making it worse. So man thing goes after him, but he literally lights up in flames and allows despair to get away and take the form of Mr. Forrester. Meanwhile, on Lee Forrester's ship, the Arcadia, she invites Scott out for dinner and drinks with the rest of the crew so that they can bond more, and also just because she she thinks Scott is hot. She full out says that that's why she hired him. And her toxic trait is that she likes to try to fix dudes who are damaged and she can tell he's damaged. At the X mansion, the team has been cleaning up the damage in the danger room and around the rest of the mansion for weeks. There's so many repairs needed that the professor can't even afford it and he ends up asking Warren for money. And Logan and Kurt are making jokes about Kitty being a teen terror since she was kind of the one responsible for all the damage. Colossus sees that this really bothers her and he tries to make her feel better but Kurt and Logan keep at it and Kitty takes off crying. Meanwhile, back in Florida, Lee gets a phone call from her dead dad. She doesn't know he's dead. Saying that she needs to meet him up in Citrusville where she grew up and she asks Scott to accompany her so that they can spend some time. And Scott says yeah, even though he's not trying to get involved with anyone right now, he's still sad about Jean, but it's obvious that Lee is trying to get with him. They arrive at her childhood home, and she excitedly hugs her dad, she asks how he is, and Despair says, your dad killed himself this morning, I helped him do it. He throws her off the staircase, and Scott catches her, and Despair transforms reality around them. To feed off their fear, he causes all these hallucinations. He hallucinates a battle where the original X-Men have all died, and the new X-Men are sentinels, and then they're zombies, and he's like, this can't be right, this didn't happen this way. Then he's atop that butte where he proposed to Jean, and suddenly they're in a chapel getting married. Jean tells him, take off your visor, open your eyes, nothing will happen. And he trusts her, so he does, and he blasts her body into a lifeless pulp. So to save himself from these hallucinations, Scott throws himself out the window, and outside is the man thing, who's picking up on all these negative emotions. And he approaches Scott, but walks right past him, and Scott realizes, he isn't here for me. So he follows Man-Thing back inside the tower, tries to attack Despair, but the optic blasts go right through him. Man-Thing is on fire again, and Despair explains that the human part of Man-Thing feeling fear is exactly what's setting the demon part of Man-Thing on fire. And Scott realizes that all of Despair's hallucinations were designed to make him feel less hope. So if Despair feeds on hopelessness, Scott just isn't going to feel that anymore. And it works. The Man-Thing's empathy powers pick up on Scott's courage, and he's able to take out Despair while Scott gets Lee out of this house and out to safety. 